I'll do your mom on Valentine's Day. You're live. Well, I'm live. All right, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Men, did I just, I'll, I'll be saying this a few times. Don't forget if you're a loser and you actually don't do sweet things all the time, don't forget this is your day where the whole world reminds you to not be an asshole and go do something sweet for your wife. But really, we're going to pour epoxy. And this is what you really should do for your girl. If you really want to make her happy, you should just go get a roller and just start dumping epoxy on stuff all over your house. We're gonna do quite a few projects today, but, and just, if they wonder, just say, Levi told me to do it. I'm trying to perfect my skills at our tub and sink coating, and it is so fun, and we're just kinda of having fun with it. Not necessary everything I'm doing right now, but it actually had a perfect layer on it, and I sanded it. How is everybody today? You know, who out there, and I don't even know if there's anybody on the live, I just talked to you guys, I might be just talking to myself, I don't know, but who out there is like me and actually thinks Valentine's for pathetic people? So, I get tired of seeing guys all racing in the store the night before Valentine's or the morning breakfast because they're like, oh shit, I forgot to get something. I say, if you love somebody, you should love them because it's Tuesday. You should love them because it's just a random day. It's probably not real love. If you're a woman out there and the only times you get stuff is on your birthday or Valentine's Day, surprise, surprise, your guy does not think about you at all. You're the last thing on his mind. Well, hopefully I didn't just piss off all my Valentine's crowd. I'm just a big fan of like trying to consistently be sweet to the people you love and not have to be reminded. But if you are gonna do something for Valentine's, make it epic. Make it different. Take, take them on a walk. Flower child, love you, you badass. God bless you. Flower child, that's a good name too. I'm so much more of a hippie than I used to be. All the love, thank you guys for all the love. You guys have no idea. Thank you for even following along and following our channel. Speak your mind, boy. I speak my mind. All right. It's the only thing I actually get in trouble for is speaking my mind too often. So I formally got kicked out of a church last night, which was kind of funny. Like their religion, they kicked me out because I told them I didn't think they were really doing anything good. Ooh, look at this. It's going to be beautiful. That's cool. Yeah, no. I don't know. I guess I was, like, thinking I should... I should remind all the guys out there to do something sweet for Valentine's, but then I thought, you know, I should remind all the guys to just start being sweeter people. Same with you ladies. Be sweet all the time. Just because just cause love's in your heart. Oh, but you gotta, you gotta get up close on this. Just, Shorty said just once, reglazing, be for real. Really? You, you just gotta make sure you get it, get it in that hole really nice. You don't, you don't want to miss the hole when you're getting this. Epoxy spread this out. Is the same sink, same as well. This is the same sink. This poor sink has PTSD. I've messed with it so much. It's going to need a counselor when I'm done with it 32 coats later. Like pocket, <laughs> um, this is just a fun sink, and we're setting it over a drop can so it doesn't really matter. Okay. Oh, someone, I, I think oh, I, someone's name is Lady Bob Ross. Look at that. Lady Bob Ross? Yeah. Probably one of my favorite new people she on left. here. You know what? I'm going. She left? She left. Oh, she left. I got you. Now I'm going to torch it, guys, just lightly. Remember, let this thing, let it do its own thing. Now, because I'm going to blow glitter on this later, I'm going to really make sure that I get anything to settle, to settle, torch it. But then I'm going to let it really cool down. You don't want to be overly torching it or spraying glitter when it's hot, because if it's hot and it's still flowing a little bit, and then the glitter's on it, it's going to look like stretch marks. So. I don't know, some stretch marks look good. Mm, man, watching that shimmer. Good colors, Michael. As always. Poor roses. Guys, I don't even know how you guys are all so sweet, but the fact that you guys give so many gifts and so much love and that you follow our channel and the subscribers, everybody out there, which we do have a really cool subscription program we're about to start here in a few weeks that we've been working on where we're going to have quite a bit of extra content and the content at the beginning where we're going to show you a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. So 
Which one? You think we should do that one first? The galaxy? Yeah, ooh, and my roller will still stay preserved. All right, now on to our galaxy pour. So this here, I'm gonna mix a little now. What do we have here? Silver, gold, and black. Silver, gold, and black. Now just remember guys, we're gonna put this over a black galaxy, a black marble piece to make like just kind of a black marble galaxy. Sometimes with glitter, less is more. So I like to just put literally a couple pinches worth on there. That's a popsicle stick in there. And kind of get a mix going, see how heavy it is. I, I'm always the one that does, it goes a little too far. I'd, I'd take that glitter and I take it right to home base. First, first shot every time. I never, I never take it out on sweet little walking dates or anything. I always take the whole cup and just dump it in there and then I ruin my project. See, look at that. You do a stick test like that, dip it in there. I don't know if you can see how much is shimmering, but that's kind of how you want to get the thickness on your stick you're going to have on your piece and then decide, do I want a little more? Of course. Of course we want a little more, right? Everybody wants a little more. Will that epoxy work on a plastic bathtub? Very good. It'll work very well. Just sand that tub. Sand it. Make all sure all the silicone's gone and everything. Ooh, that is like that. Sand is sent us a hand heart. Gianna. Love you, John. God bless you guys. Uh, Lady Bob Ross said, I'm here. I love what y'all do. Lady Bob Ross, we love what you do. Show off your channel and everybody check her out. Uh, check out her work. Check it's out so Lady Bob Ross's work. I wanna, she Sugar should probably go teaching me. Sugar and spice? That's a badass name. Everything nice. It's about to happen. I think that's enough. What do y'all think? I think so. I think that's, I think if I go too heavy, it's gonna blow the back out of this thing, so. Oh, that's, now you do have to be a little thoughtful. If you pour a bunch of glitter out, glitter usually settles. So if you pour it out and just leave it here, like this, unfortunately, you just have a big odd wiener shape of glitter down here if you left it too long. So you want to immediately start spreading that so you can get that glitter spread out to where it's supposed to be. Oh yeah, look at that, guys. We're going to bath, if so, will it last? The tub and sink coating, it's the best tub and sink coating you can buy. It's so much thicker. So much heavier duty, more shock resistant than anything on the market, um, and very inexpensive. What, I think for $149, you can do your whole tub. So, this is epoxy resin from countertopepoxy.com. You are on our channel, so thank you. Thank you, please hit that subscribe button or the follow button or whatever helps you. I always get subscribe and follow confused, I don't know. And thank you for the love. I should be like those people on lives, like, okay, I'm gonna be boring, I'm not even answering questions until I see 5,000 likes. At 10,000 likes, I'll pop a tit out. Maybe that would, maybe that would help our life. <laughs> how many likes, how many likes should I have to have before I pop a tit? That should be the, that should be the question. <laughs> what did Gary Vee say? Like, if you have to pop a tit out to get content, then you don't have good <laughs> content, so maybe I better just be better at my epoxy. <laughs> Do you have any tricks to avoid hairs or dust? Any tricks to avoid hairs or dust? Here's one thing I do to avoid hair. I just shave it. So now I only get really sexy beard hairs and I'm not really home. Hairs and dust, that's a really good, I'll actually show you my very, one of my very favorite tools. Two of my favorite tools. I love vacuums. To vacuum up all the nasty settled dust on top of countertops. Or, or on top of upper cabinets, um, behind stoves, floors, like say you're pouring in your kitchen. And then what I like to do is take a leaf blower and I will actually usually Swiffer my walls first with a dry Swiffer, um, especially if it has like an orange peel texture because you'll get so much dust off. Even people, the cleanest people in the world will be shocked at what you get out. And then I go in after I disrupt everything and I take a leaf blower and I start out by blowing the tops of lights off if there's lights capturing dust, the tops of the cabinets. And I'll e either have, I have, I have these HEPA vacs that will recirculate in the room, but often turn your air on full, open a window and just get or a door and keep getting all that dust out that door, out that like inside air pulling in through your AC system. And you can't believe how, um, how effective that is at getting dust down. And then once you leaf blow like three or four times and you get all the dust that's been sitting for years in the house, take a spray bottle with alcohol in it and literally just squirt, um, literally just squirt alcohol um, um, up in the air, really high pressure and make sure it's a mist and all that alcohol is gonna capture any dust and just bring it right down to the ground. So. Do residential jobs Loma? Loma? Oh yeah, we do residential jobs. Just give us a call. 
and we'll stop by and give you a bid. So I, I'd actually personally stop by if you're in Loma. What country are you? We're in the United States of America. Sugar and spice, we always gotta have a little fire, right? And then, just so we can pretend we wreck things every so often, because this is actually a galaxy, I think I'm gonna do some galaxy shit. No, I never spray spray paints, I'm super against them. You guys know the rules. You work in Texas. Oh, yeah, I've actually done quite a few jobs in Texas. Texas is a good state to work in. You guys almost always have weather that I can do inside, outside, anything, and never have to stress too much. So. Can you do this on floors? Can I do this on floors? Yes, definitely this can be done on a floor. So a um, little different product we use, but um, we have a lot of classes coming up too. So come hit us up on one of our classes where we're actually pouring this exact product on a job and you're gonna just fall in love with it. So we have the most hands-on classes in the industry too. So if you show up to one of our classes, you're gonna be mixing, pouring, spraying, sanding, polishing, hopefully making big mistakes right here together so we can learn together, sort it out. Usually a lot of people will make their first sample here in the class so they they'll say well at home i want you know a white marble countertop or i want you know these different colors that my wife likes and so that's when i like to have them on their final sample just really start practicing exactly what they're going to do in real life so kind of fun I'm s are gray oh yes i have hot epoxy over there but i'm having fun over here so say what you know what? I was a Marine for, I was only a Marine for six years. Thanks to everybody out there that serves our country their whole lives in so many ways. Is the bath epoxy only in white or can you? Use oh, bath epoxy, you can actually do some kind of crazy colors, just the same as that sink there. But just remember, it might take some base layers and top coats and stuff. You might have to try to be a little artsy with it for a second. All right, now this is probably where I'm messing up and I shouldn't do this, but. Oh, you know what? If you just tried to call, this is kind of funny, and we do have people available right now, but um, we have our phone systems all replaced this morning. So it's newer and better, but I think they're kind of awkward and down a little bit for probably an hour or so. I think now they're finally, I hear them ringing again. I just got the biggest education on phone systems I've ever had, too. So. Any courses in Canada? Canada, not not recently. I haven't. I've only done, ever done like Red Deer and Toronto classes. But like again, like I always say, if you guys have a nice training facility and you want me to come up and actually do a class, I most definitely would. Um, I just want to make sure it's something that's working out for you guys that you guys want to see. So Casey makes cultured marble showers and vanity for a living. What? Totally cultured right. dude, cultured marble. I absolutely love seeing what you all do with that stuff. So that's a fun process too to watch. Thanks for joining our channel and thanks for following along. Someone said we do epoxy floors and for our metallic cell, we keep having metallic Um and metallic floors, they said. You know what? Get a better epoxy that, that I will say that some of the ingredients that are non compatible with oxygen for air release um, are not cheap and a lot of companies are dropping a lot of the chemicals out of their products. So definitely give us a call. We have an amazing product. We have two different flooring epoxies that are top of the line. So, and really good prices. I guarantee if you call us up, if you want to test it out, we'll beat anybody's price on their products for what you actually get when it's done. Everybody worries too. They're like, well, how many square feet can you get? Well, it's very dependent on what the pattern you're trying to get out of it is. So we're in Grand Junction, Colorado, and we have classes currently in um, Florida, North Carolina, Vero Beach, Florida, Ocean Isles, um, North Carolina, and Grand Junction, Colorado. We're currently looking for a location for classes in California, most likely Southern, like Los Angeles area, um, and in Texas. Those are the two big places. 
um, that we're looking for. And then we're most likely going to be doing some classes in Italy soon. In about three months, we'll be doing some in Italy and then maybe South Africa again, two of my favorite places. So what do y'all think? Did I mess it up? The Philadelphia, give, a, give our office a call, no matter where you're from. We have people everywhere, so give our office a call and we'll get somebody out there to take care of whatever you need if you have a project. Vero Beach, Florida on the 26th of February, so here just coming up in about two weeks. So it's going to be an actual awesome job site where we're going to be learning quite a bit of hands-on stuff. And um, we're going to also be doing some samples, some countertop samples. And hopefully we can talk them into letting us trowel a wall or something beautiful. I don't know what y'all think of this. I better get to my I better get to my gray. I better figure out how hot this gray is. You know what? It hasn't burned my hand yet, but it's not cold. Okay, now this is where we're going to get our look. I'm going to spray this very, very, very heavy because I'm not wanting droplets. I'm wanting a full mist so that it doesn't separate it as much. If you spray big droplets, it'll really create a cell effect. This here will, should lay down and make a real mystic swirly effect and really just help everything continue to flatten out. It's kind of a beautiful way to, to let this evaporate off and it'll leave a real aura look, I hope. Oh. Or it'll just be a big pile of crap, but you guys are here to see. A decal, pour your epoxy floor, um, let it cure, soap set your vinyl like soap and water, um, and then, oh, what's, am I, what are my accent colors for this? Um, silver, charcoal, and pearl. All sprays? Mm -hmm. All sprays, silver, charcoal, and pearl. This is our concrete one. I do love spraying only accents, so I'm going to, I used to do a lot of jobs, guys, where I didn't really know how to. Everybody said, you're not supposed to pigment epoxy. And I was like, well, we actually did PSI tests and it's strong, it's colored. But of course, then you're looking at me and I'm like this non-artsy little ginger that was wandering around and trying to figure out what the hell to do with it. You guys have finally seen me figure some art stuff out, but yeah, I'm not naturally an artist at all. Um, so all I would do is I would usually spray so much of what I do right out of alcohol, using 99% alcohol and um, mica powders, and man, you can get some beautiful looks just like that. Adam said happy Valentine's Day, brother. Adam, God bless you, bro. Dude, Adam, thank you, man. Thank you very much. I hope if there's anything I'm ever not covering or if I'm glossing over something too fast, or, or if I offend you, please let me know. You know what, um, depending on what epoxy, I would just pour a better epoxy over the top. And if you did, if you had some kind of contamination or something that caused that and you did have a high grade epoxy, maybe try wet sanding and polishing it, see if it gets through that. Um, and then we have different products we could maybe apply to the top, but you could polish or pour ours right over the top and we do tons of white marble. So, and we have very good results with it. I feel like this is warped. I feel like my piece is. Um, very similar methods, it just, it's on a bigger scale and I do a lot of those classes, so definitely let me know and, um, and follow along. If you hit the um, follow button or the subscribe button, just check our channel out because a lot of times we're actually just pouring floors on these lives, so if you want to watch a floor get poured, definitely hit that subscribe or is there like a notification bell on here that they can push? Um, is that how that works? Oh, no. I'm telling you what to do and I don't know what to do. So. All the instructions coming out of the guy that doesn't know how to follow our channel. Do we? Uh, we have an awesome guy in um, Arizona that can definitely take care of you. So give me a call. And if you have a job in Arizona, I could get you um, contacted with him right away. So. I'm offended by how good this The gray one's the best looking because I haven't done anything to it yet. I'm offended that you think only things I haven't done anything to look good. No. I'm not offended by you guys. I love y'all. I'm starting to do back burns next. I'm wanting to put it. Oh, can't wait to try it. hell yes. Call us up if you need any help on that, guys, or some really good resin for that. I love the fracture burns. Mm -hmm. uh, Pour this over LVP. Don't shock yourself. Oh, LVP works very well. This is an amazing, because it truly has zero VOC, it'll work really well in all those situations. Now we just sprayed pearl. Whoops. 
pearl is my favorite girl. Now a little bit of silver. Silver's similar to pearl, but it has a little more of that gray. And then your charcoal's even darker. So they're all just varying um, colors between white and charcoal and the silver in between. But it's kind of cool because if you do them right, they usually all really shimmer just a little bit differently. And like I say, you can do this whole thing, never have to brush it. You don't ever have to be an artist. You literally just squirt. Um, this is 99% isopropyl alcohol mixed with our mica powders. And I sprayed pearl first and then a little bit of silver, which like I say, it's very, very subtle. So I really like the sprays only. Now this is charcoal. Can you pour this over concrete? Um, yes, definitely pour this over concrete. But if you have any hydrostatic vapor or anything like that, um, go ahead and spray um, alcohol down heavy on that slab to absorb any moisture out of the slab. Then go ahead and take our Ultra Flex Epoxy. We have an ultra flexible, really, really well, good priced epoxy that's very durable, has an amazing bond strength. But I'll mix actually like 10% acetone in it for just a really thin skim coat where you get about 100, 150 square feet per gallon. But the best part about that is um, um, as soon as the alcohol adsorbs the moisture up out of that surface and then the acetone with epoxy soaks back down into the slab, it'll cure because acetone can actually mix with water and alcohol a little bit differently draws moisture to itself. You can really dry the top of a slab out and create an amazing anti-moisture um, anti membrane. So. So there we are, guys. I mean, it's, if you sprayed it and then you're like, dude, I don't know, I think I just messed it up. You know what? She didn't mess a damn thing up. Just take your roller and go back to town. This is just our concrete kit, and I poured it at about 120 degrees, which is about um, probably 40 degrees hotter than you'd ever want to pour because I left it here while I did the other projects. So it sat in the cup for at least 30 minutes before I even poured. So you can you know that this has a pretty darn good work time. Is there any way you can make the cure time go faster? Yep, just heat it up, just like I did. Like this right here, we'd probably be able to touch this after lunch, not not long after lunch, I guess. That's how I said that, like it's 9 in the morning. You can probably touch this in like three hours um, because I poured it so hot. So if you're really trying to speed that cure, leave the product in your cup longer. But remember, you're going to have way less work time. So it definitely affects your work time. but. I mean, if you like working like that, good for you, good on you. And look at how simple that um, concrete gray sample is. I mean, this is an easy kit that a lot of people do. I've been kind of liking some of the simpler jobs I've been seeing people do. It just looks richer. I mean, this here would be a really rich look. And then still sometimes you have the people that are like, well, I like it, but I want a tiny bit of color. Don't be afraid, maybe like spray a little, I'm gonna try a little translucent green. And I like the, I love our trans colors because you really don't see them unless you get it just in the right shade with the sunshine or something, and then it'll kind of pop through. And then, of course, with all my natural colors, ask me why. Kind of like, kind of like Saddam with the gold. I just like gold on everything. Gold. I hate gold on anything in the house, but I like gold in epoxy because you can get a really natural rust effect, like a patina effect. So. That's what I'm gonna to try to do through here, is just give it a really subtle, this is pretty diluted gold powder mixed with our 99% um, isopropyl. If you notice, it's not super contrasty or anything, but we're getting a really nice, a really nice, just a subtle, kind of a rusty patina look in the back there. And like I say here, this is where I wanna be kind of random. Just random, spread a little heavier in some spots, lighter in other areas. Oh yes, we pour this mostly over concrete all the time. Concrete countertops, concrete floors, we do aircraft hangar floors, just anything in between. Look at this. Thank you for all the love, guys. I'm about, to, I'm about to have an accident with glitter here in a second, back on our sink that we started on, so if you're wanting to see that done. Now, of course I just sprayed alcohol, so I do not want to um, spray this right now with, um, I do not want to spray this right now with a bunch of alcohol and then come back with a torch too quick. We want to give it time. But just remember that if you have a ton of alcohol down, just let it evaporate really naturally on its own and stay away from that torch. And now you're kind of seeing a little more. Try to get, I want like one little kind of rusty corner in this, but something kind of natural looking. So let's see if I can get this a little, a little better. There you are. Well, 
I'm a fan. And now for our, and what did I say my favorite tool was? Was a leaf blower, and I'll show you why. I don't know. Maybe this is the worst mistake I can make. It looks so beautiful. Yes, I am so sorry. It looks so beautiful right now. I don't, I don't really feel like I should do this, but I mean, man, that laid down so nice. That is glass. But oh, I don't know. I mean, if you were me and you had a leaf blower on glitter, what would you do? Happy Valentine's, everybody. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're truly loved on every day of your life. You know what? Every one of you are, and I'm, like I say, I'm not religious, as we all know, because I don't go to church, but the real God of heaven loves you, whether it's Valentine's Day or not. I'm gonna do what I did last night on this. Michael and spray alcohol into it because man that really laid it down nice I think that's what partly what got us such a clean look yeah it's like a crazy look dude that's like okay blow the excess off and then back to the clear you know what I totally get it guys Ooh, that's laying down nice over here Say what? Look at that. That ain't the ugliest thing. That's almost like a color shift glitter. Every angle you see it at a totally different. Yeah, I'll step away and it'll be like red. Yeah, that's nuts how it changes colors just from the angles you see it at. Just, just heavy alcohol popping any final air bubbles. And this has been down, you know, that was hot epoxy, poured, you know, 30 minutes ago, and then the glitter stuck in it. And now that alcohol is just landing on top and helping that glitter settle into it. The alcohol will evaporate, and it should leave a much smoother finish than if you were just to walk off leaving that glitter just sitting on top. So this should all go subsurface, be really nice. And man, that hole's getting smaller every time I put, it, put epoxy in it. The edges, this has been poured like 20 times for fun. Usually you scrape the edges right while you're doing it. Um, but if in a case like this, you could take a fine tool um, or an ultra hot razor blade. I prefer a fine tool or a flush cut router bit if you're a little more tool savvy. And I, I take a flush cut router often and just cut right along the side or a fine tool and cut the drips off. It's best though to get it right when it first happens. So thank you guys so much. Ask any questions you want. Or Was I supposed to show them the wall or anything today? Yeah. I think well, so too. That, said, is the alcohol we'll go on a No, the alcohol is not a top coat. It's just smoothing my top coat out because I didn't want to torch it again. I just figure alcohol is a little bit better. How do you maintain the hole for the drain? Maintain the hole for the drain. Usually you're actually going to just pull that drain out, um, the drain insert out, put, put like a bucket underneath the sink just to catch any that drips through, then reinsert that drain insert with some plumber's putty, how you standardly set it. And it's thin enough, it's not going to create any issues. That's the best way. Here's just a fun painting. I show everybody what we did here the other day, just or a fun epoxy pour we did on an old frame. I don't know if you're. Does it have to be poured cold? Um, no, don't ever pour epoxy under the recommended temperature because it it really molecularly has to be um, at a proper temperature for the molecules yeah. to properly mix. So we'll get out of here. We have realtors talking too loud in here. So these are kinds of things you do in class. A class built this. A class poured the floors we're walking on. These are all samples done in class. So everything you see on this wall, we show how to do wood graining with wall epoxy, stuff like this. That's a non-sag formula of epoxy. This is... No, don't use acetone. It'll ruin your sprayers, just dry them out, and it'll, it'll actually evaporate so fast, and it'll be much less healthy to breathe, too. This right here, this is just eight sheets of, or sorry, four sheets of three-quarter inch MDF. Um, we double stacked them, built one long piece. Um, and um, cut it, uh, cut the miters on the end after we poured it. We did pour the bottom side first, as you can see, and then just flipped it over. This is all just epoxy, but we try to really go over in our classes how to have a higher end, kind of a more professional epoxy, something you could do in a high-end home, because in my opinion, most of the epoxy guys are out there showing you how to smear $2 worth of shit on somebody's 
cheap countertop and they don't care if you make money, they just want to keep reselling. So learn, come and learn how to do some higher end options and really fix people's problems in a class and it's, it'll change your business altogether. So here's our wall epoxy. I love our wall epoxy. We do this in showers. Shower wall, surrounds right over tile and we'll show how to do this over tile in a shower surround. Um, very fun to do. So, um, and then I'm in the middle of polishing a wall here. I know a class kept doing it. I'm using a foam buffer and you know, I usually use Meguiar's ultra fine polishing paste for my final polish um, after 5,000. So I, I like to run usually like 500,000, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 on, on sanding discs with a DA sander on my Metabo. And then I get up to um, past my 5,000 and I don't really run 7,000 pads. I do have them, but I usually go to an abrasive polishing paste. And I'm a kind of a bigger fan of Meguiar's and I'm not paid by either. I've been trying this, but I don't think it really removes like dullness as good as Meguiar's does. But here, yep, go to right to the link in the bio and our workshops are right there. We show everybody, we do polishing too. The class had kind of spot polished this wall um, last week. And so I'm just trying to polish the whole thing out. So it's really important um, when you're sanding a wall to clean in between all your cuts. So um, I started out on this whole wall. It was, it was a pretty rough wall. So if some of you guys have been following along and we just trialed epoxy right over the surface. Um, then I, it took a while. I had to come in here with 320 and cut this and it was probably like four hours just to kind of flatten it out. Um, but then it, if you get that initial cut and profile correct where you're cutting all your highs, it'll really make it um, your subsequent cuts go much faster. So as you can see now, we have a polished like 5,000 on this end and I just have to work that down the wall. But you should be, if you're not wavy and you keep your, your um, sander really flat, your buffer flat and you're organized, you should get a wall very, very flat that you should see a reflection in. And that's something really fun that we do. We actually do that on job sites a lot, and in the classes we try to teach it a lot. So thank, thank you guys so much. What's that? Lady Bob Ross, I'm going to message you guys if that's okay. Please, baby Rob, Lady Bob Ross. I want to hear whatever you have to say. I Give us a DM. HGTV shows would love to feature you. Yeah, let me know if you want to feature us. I have been on Texas Fix and Flip, and which is not, I'm not bragging. I just named like one of the most ghetto TV shows. So it's like, I have been on Jerry Springer. That's where I found my father. No, I'm just, oh, that's a jerk. So, um, so well, I'm probably, I'm probably gonna tune out. Here's one last thing I like to kind of show off. It's sanded on the backside, so you can't see through it because I want it to look frosted. But this is actually about a thousand pound wall with over a hundred gallons of our countertop product. We do have a clear casting, but I've been watching with UV exposure, how clear an inch of our countertop product stays now. And now this is, this is coming up on over just right about two years. So I will tell anybody out there very proudly stone coat anybody that thinks you have badass shit. We have better price stuff, way harder stuff. You can do structural stuff with it and it's very clear for a long time. So if you want an actual good product or the best training classes, please hit us up. So, and forgive my weird. This is when I say, I'm, um, I think I'd actually watched like three episodes of Game of, Game of Thrones and I was like, dude, I like gears. So I bought a bunch of gears on eBay. This gear here is like 80 pounds. And I just started, this is like a, somebody probably, I don't want to misspeak, but I'm sure that goes on a farm implement for some kind of, not a disc, but something for weeds. So they're not all gears, but I thought they looked badass. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, again, happy Valentine's Day to all you guys, but remember, be lovely to people every day of the week. So I would challenge some of you guys to just go do something sweet the day after Valentine's as well. Pretend you forgot about it and then give them a Valentine's card, card the next day. I'll tell you a dumb story. I knew a guy that I love, it's my dad, I won't name names, um, and he was getting remarried when I was in high school. And he, my dad, God bless him, he's an amazing person too. He's such a badass and a good father, but he's very cheap. So it's the day of his wedding and he's getting married at like one in the afternoon at Lake Mead. And I'm there from school. I came down to, to be able to see his wedding and he's like, come shopping with me, Levi. You gotta, we're gonna get ready for the reception. I'm like, you and me, it's like, you know, 10 in the morning, we're gonna get ready for a reception. So he buys some like trays of stuff and then he sees flowers. Um, flower, I can't remember, it was roses and it was like $25 for a bundle of roses. And it literally said going on sale and it had a date on it. And my dad checked the clock and it was the next day. And he's like, that's tomorrow the, um, that they're going on sale. So he's like, you know what? We're not gonna have um, flowers at the wedding, but I'll buy her flowers tomorrow. I'm not joking. So they stayed there and he bought her flowers the next morning. So I don't know why I told them, I just thought, <laughs> 
either don't do something for somebody or just do something sweet. And if you don't want to spend money, spend time, because time's a, time's a commodity that we always undervalue of ourselves. So don't waste your time with people you shouldn't waste it with. Don't throw your pearls before swine, as the Bible says. Um, and go spend a special time with people you love. So God bless you guys. Have a badass day. And I hope you kill a pedophile before I see you guys next.